Aphids everywhere. <gasps> There's like a whole colony going on here. Are you eating all my iceberg lettuce or are you just living your best life? You know, if your garden isn't getting eaten by something, you're not part of the ecosystem. So welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Deborah, and today it's another garden update. Editing Deborah here from the future. Before we get into this video, I'm going to show you what happened in the garden a couple of weeks ago. It's the 23rd of July 2020. My first butternut squash flower. Looks very much like a courgette flower. Some of the sun gold tomatoes are looking like they're starting to ripen. We have a little friend, a little ladybug. I've also put in some extra support for the sunflowers. <laughs> So they've got a load more bamboo down here because this sunflower is now as tall as me. Five foot four at an absolute push. I think we've had the cherry tree for about three years, maybe nearly four. I can see one really red cherry up there, but I can't reach it. So there is cherries on the cherry tree. It's just that there's just not that many of them. Now we've seen those clips. Let's get back into the day's video. Welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Deborah, and today it's garden update. So it's Wednesday, the fifth of August. Is it? Or how? How? How is it August? This is ridiculous. Oh well, better go on with it. <laughs> it's not really August, is it? I mean, apparently it's twenty degrees today which is definitely a heat wave in Scotland. Why am I wearing a jumper? I don't know. I didn't think it would be this warm today. Never mind. What are we going to do today? Lots. Lots of things are flowering now. We'll get to that in a tick. So before I do a greenhouse update, let's do a raised bed garden update first. There's a lot to do. Holy toot sticks. Oh, hi, Pearl. Pearl's strolling in the grass here. Are you having a good time, bud? Are you having a good day? Can you not reach that? Oh, you're sat on it. Oh, you can't reach it. Well, you're having a great time. Excellent. Let's let's crack on, shall we? I've got to harvest the cherries. The cherries are finally ripening. I mean, admittedly, we've still only got about eight, but it's still better than last year. And I really need to harvest them before the wasps get at them and devour the bloody lot. I'm going to harvest the rest of my early potatoes. Should have maybe done that a wee while ago, but here we are. I'm going to harvest the beetroot. I'm going to harvest the rest of the black currants. I'll maybe have a look at the rest of the onions and see how they are doing. And now I'll maybe have a little look at the strawberries, the flowers, and we will check on the garlic and the onions and see how they are drying out. Start at the staircase. All these flowers are looking beautiful now. We've got some more wildflowers appearing. Gorgeous little things. Still don't know what they're called. <laughs> this rose down here. Seems to be getting way more roses on him, but I don't know if he just needs a bit more support. And I've got a rose over here. I really need to deadhead some of this. I've got a few roses left. I think with the roses, at the end of the year, I might move them to the side of the arches here and here. So the rose we've got there, and the other rose that we've got down there, I'm thinking to put either side of our archway, instead of growing peas or monge too, or climbing beans up it. Because I think the roses climbing up here would look really pretty. That's more later on in the season, I think. I'm going to wait till all the peas have finished growing and then we'll change that over. This is my beautiful cherry tree that I showed you earlier. We have got some ripe cherries. Some of them are really up high. How am I ever going to reach that one? Up there. Lots of the cherries have already been, well, split or attacked by bugs. Is this one alright? Just about. <laughs> so I'm going to harvest some of these cherries. Uh, we'll see what they're like. Strawberries are just a bit finished now. We just love a few strawberries ripening, but I think that's pretty much end of the season now for the strawberries. So we've got a few runners now. I might pop a few of them into here today. Oh, and back to these plants. Yes, all the plants here are looking lovely, I think. All the flowers have come on lovely this year. And obviously the mint and the curry plant. The Royal Mix F1 Sal. I don't, I'm not even going to try to present that. But look how beautiful she is. That's absolutely beautiful. And we've got a few more starting to flower here and here. I've been stood in the cherry tree trying to pluck out cherries and I'm a bit sweaty now. <laughs> Down here we've got the red currants. So I've pretty much harvested all the red currants now. Next to the red currants we've got the blackberries. We've got quite a lot of blackberries. Loads of them. But they are certainly taking their time to ripen. Down here is the raspberry. The raspberry is really coming on now. 
I thought he died and that would be the end of it, but he's coming back. Can't wait to see what he does next year. Down at the bottom of the garden, this is my black currant. Not the biggest of harvest, but it is ripening. So we've got loads of black currants on here. Well, not loads, but I think everything is ripened that is going to ripen. I'm going to harvest these today and defrost the red currants I've had in the freezer and hopefully make jam. Next to the black currants, we've got this tree which is an acer tree. I had cut away all the leaves that were here in the hope that I was going to put some fairy lights on. Well, well I have now ordered fairy lights. I'm just waiting for them to arrive so I can put them up. Down here we've got the bramble. So spiky but these fruit are delicious and it is just about to burst into life. You can see them just starting to ripen. These are the sweetest berries. So I cannot wait for these guys to be ready. We've got apple tree, pear tree. There's definitely no pears on this tree. Nope, no pears. I mean, a few of the apples have damage on them, but I'm just going to leave them and the bugs can help themselves. But the rest of the apples are looking pretty good. They should start having a hue of red in the next couple of months and they'll be ready to harvest about October, November. Oh, we've got a few actually. Up here are looking a lot bit more red. Finally, it looks like the climbing French bean is doing something. He is definitely climbing. He has climbed onto the pear tree and looks like he's making a break for the apple tree. <laughs> So I think putting in these metal supports has helped really well. They really love climbing up that. Check it out. They're really cool. And we have flowers. Hopefully that should mean we'll get some beans. Marrow peas down here. And behind... <laughs> oh, hi poltergeist. Not really, it's the wind. So here we've got a blueberry. So behind the blueberry, we did have Shiraz Monge too. So far, I have one blueberry. Hmm, not the biggest success. Down here, the Shiraz Monge 2 has pretty much come to an end. I thought I might just leave those beans on, let them go to seed so I can save them for next year. Other side of the archway, we had the marrow peas. I've harvested all the marrow peas. And in here, I've planted more marrow pea seeds. So I did that about a week ago. I think you can just see them popping through here. I should have done this more regularly throughout the summer, but I didn't. But you can probably see them popping through here, here, here. Here, here. So hopefully, we might get a few more peas before the end of the year. I always plant more things in August and give it a try. Flowers are coming on lovely. I've cut down a few things here. The hydrangeas are not quite in full bloom, but they're certainly coming along. They are beautiful. And down here, we've got my flower planter. When I compare this to the start of the year, it was so bare. And now it seems quite overgrown. And then there's this quite tall. That's grown quite a lot in the space of a week or two, isn't it? Oh, what am I? Five, four, at a push. <laughs> Love that. The red sunflowers I've got this year, are they just about to flower? I don't know. That's my tallest sunflower. I've got a few other ones. This one looks like it's about to flower. Oh, so very close to flowering. Hydrange at the bottom of the garden here in the darkest corner is slowly starting to flower, but not to the same extent. So yeah, the flower planter I'm really pleased with. Although, this looks like some sort of form of brassic, like broccoli or something. Is there a seed waft in here? I didn't know about. That well, definitely does look like some form of broccoli, doesn't it? We'll have to wait and see what happens with that too. And ye old Christmas tree is definitely starting to sprout too. I love these little flowers. These are gorge. These are both different types. If you want to see what flowers these are, I shall link a video up here. One of these was supposed to be a purple and one was supposed to be a blue. I suppose if I just pick one. I think they are slightly different. Don't know if it shows up so much on camera, but this is a much more vibrant colour compared to this. Is this the purple and this is the blue the other way around? And the markings in it are slightly different. Chico. Don't, no, 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 don't eat the flowers. No, what are you doing? Dogs at leisure. Are you having a nice time there in the garden, boys? I'll leave the dogs to leisure in the garden. This is also a blueberry. So there is more blueberries on this, but they've still not ripened. Righty ho, so on to the raised beds. So today I'm going to harvest the rest of the early Scotch potatoes in the top of that bed. Oh, hello, rogue potato flower. You are actually very pretty. I am going to harvest the beetroot today. Lots is going to flower and once that happens, you need to just dig them up. So how is the beetroot looking? I think the beetroot's looking pretty good, isn't it, in there? I mean, look at the size of that. Wow. 
Yeah, so we'll get the beetroot harvested today. How are the onions looking? I think we'll leave the onions for a little while longer. I'm gonna get on harvesting the rest of the early potatoes and the beetroot and maybe a few other things. I'll get back to you with an update of what else is growing and the greenhouse. Remember to get all your little seed potatoes out or at least try to get them out. Oh wow, there's loads in here. <laughs> As always, be careful you're digging your digging tights out and don't stab them. They're looking fab. I have just finished harvesting some of the potatoes. Quite sweaty. Well, it was quite warm and now it's kind of cooled down a bit so it's quite nice. I'm like a sweaty Betty now. These are the potatoes I've harvested. We've got Scottish air lace and I have pulled out some of the rooster potatoes. They look fab. That's where all the potatoes came out of. Here's the potatoes that are left. I think all of these are rooster potatoes. I've just heaped some of the soil onto the rooster potatoes because that'll stop any of the potatoes in here peeping through and getting sun damaged if that's even a thing in Scotland. So now the potatoes are done, well half of them, I'm going to move on to the beetroot and get them harvested. There is a few bumps starting to bowl. I think the variety that's starting to bowl is the rainbow beetroot. I don't know why they want to bowl but I'm pretty sure they did this last year to me as well. Do you not like when the beetroot bolt either? Same. In here we've got the boltry beetroot. I think it's definitely time to get them harvested and then we shall get some sweet pickled beetroot. Homemade sweet pickled beetroot is surely the best type. I'm not entirely convinced the rainbow beetroot has done that well this year. So I've got my fork for digging. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, is that the tiniest beet you've ever seen? Yeah, I don't think there's any point in keeping any of that. This one's a tiny bit better. Oh, I have a feeling this one's totally gone to seed. So that won't taste very nice. <laughs> don't stab your beetroot. Oh, now that's a better one. That's definitely a little bit better. So I'm going to keep harvesting and we'll see what we get. I was just having a lovely day, digging up the potatoes, digging up the beetroot. I was just about finished. I was kind of thinning out the courgettes and it started raining. That is our dugout. Um, sorry about the bird poo on the windows. <laughs> down here, that's where the beetroot was. I've also thinned out some of the courgettes down there. <laughs> and now my beetroot is just sat in the rain. I guess since it's raining and I can't do much, I don't really want to be doing that. I'll maybe just go ahead and give you a little greenhouse tour to pass the time. Just so I don't have to get my camera wet outside really. This is how the greenhouse is looking. Let's start down here with the peas. I've got a few up here and here. So as the peas are dying away, like the marrow peas, I have stuck a few more pea seeds in here. That was about a week ago, so you can kind of see them coming through here. You can see them coming through here. So hopefully we'll get some more peas before the end of the year. Kian is not looking its best. <laughs> it's definitely getting eaten by something. I mean, the jalapeno's a lot happier. Strange that they're in the same bed, but it's a Kian that seems to be getting eaten. This is a salad F1 peppers. We do have a few flowers in there, so hopefully we'll get peppers. So this is the Hungarian black chilli pepper. These flowers are absolutely gorgeous, which I can find more for you. So we've got quite a few little flowers in here. There's definitely more appearing. So Hungarian black chilli I grew from food waste, so I'm really pleased with that. So this is a sweet pepper red skin. Look at all the flowers. I'm not convinced all these are going to turn into peppers, but we do have quite a few in here. This is probably the best one so far. I mean, it's not big, but through here, we've definitely got lots more appearing. Next to that, we've got the aubergines. We finally do have a flower, or we, we did have a flower. We do have a couple of flowers on the aubergine plants. Oh, oh my gosh, I've just noticed. Have you seen this infestation? What is this craziness? Right, well this plant's gonna have to get treated. Oh my god, look at them all. Bafids, everywhere. <gasps> There's like a whole colony going on here. Funny, I don't think they're on anything else. They probably are, they're probably on everything. How have I not noticed them before? Look at all of them there living their best lives. We'll deal with that in a little minute. On to the tomatoes. So the tomatoes are starting to hit my greenhouse roof. So I will just snip them with the secateurs. Kind of keep the tomato plants under control a little bit. I've been regularly feeding and watering the tomatoes. Definitely getting a lot more ripe tomatoes now. There's a whole cluster in here. These first ones are the sun golds. They're lovely looking. I don't think they go like a proper red red. So we will just pick them and eat them whenever from now on. And then we've got the cherry tomatoes in here. So I had this problem last year with tomatoes splitting. 
and I wondered if it was because I hadn't watered them enough. I can't have watered them too much, it's impossible. It's when I do water the tomatoes, I spray the whole plant. I do think this is from not watering enough, these kind of yellowy leaves, and then they kind of go this sort of brown, I don't know. To help the tomatoes ripen, I have been keeping my greenhouse door closed, so maybe it's just been a little bit too warm at times. Next up, we've got the money makers. And they look great, a reasonable sized tomato, but none of these are turning red yet, or ripening. On to the bottom of the greenhouse, we've got the butternut squash, and then we've got the sweet corn, and the artichoke. We're going to ignore the artichoke because I have no idea. I need to read more about that. Butternut squash is starting to spread out quite nicely. We've had lots of flowers in the butternut squash and maybe tiny butternut squash is appearing. Under here is looking really good as well. Got one there. Oh, that one's dying off. This one looks pretty good. Even if I've got one butternut squash, I'll be more than delighted. And the sweet corn. Everything's kind of shot up and hitting the top of the greenhouse now. Anything you see, there's little tufty bits. That's a corn on the cobs. Got one there, there, a couple in there. That one looks quite good. A couple here. I am more than delighted with the sweet corn so far. I wasn't sure what to do with this pot, so I decided to put more little gem lettuce. Was that about a week ago? So it's starting to sprout already. I did put in quite a few because I wasn't sure if it would be eaten by the slugs and snails. And having more lettuce into the autumn and winter would be wonderful. Iceberg lettuce. Is it you that's eating everything? What even are you? Are you the one that's eating all my... I think you are. Are you eating all my iceberg lettuce or are you just living your best life? You know, if your garden isn't getting eaten by something, you're not part of the ecosystem. I'll just keep telling myself that. So winter lettuce is looking really good actually. It is getting eaten every now and again, but like I said, it's part of the ecosystem. And then the spinach. I don't know how much of this is actually edible anymore. I think I just want to rip it out completely after everything I said last time and just put in lettuce for the winter season and autumn. And my lemongrass is definitely a lot happier in the greenhouse. I really hope that is lemongrass and not just like a weed. It doesn't smell of lemongrass as yet, but it's maybe not mature yet. Let's move on to these guys. We've got passion fruit flower. This is definitely growing. We've got Chinese lantern, and this is a Himalayan blue poppy. Of course, no blue poppies. This will be the plant just getting established, and then hopefully next year we'll have poppies. All of these are grew from seed. I'm very pleased with myself. I mean, the greenhouse at the moment is just keeping on top of the tomato plants and then remembering to harvest anything that ripens, like your tomatoes and your lettuce, and patiently wait for your peppers in the vague hope that they ever actually ripen. Because I've never been able to get a pepper to ripen yet. Fingers crossed for this year. <laughs> remember those pesky side shoots? <laughs> they will grow back. So remember to go back and pinch them out. Tomatoes are a constant battle. You just really have to stay on top of them. And like I say, the side shoots will come back. Always kind of double check your tomatoes all the way down to the bottoms of the stalks and take out any of those extra side shoots. It hasn't stopped raining, so I've got a brolly, and I'm going to show you around the garden to what, to what I've done. <laughs> well, that's the greenhouse. <laughs> Raised beds. Dug up the potatoes. That's the potatoes in the yard. Was it a month ago or a couple of weeks ago? I planted a whole lot of new seeds in here. I do see some carrot seedlings. I think those two could be lettuce. That's got to be a dandelion. I'm not sure if any of the rest of it has worked. I think the slugs might have gotten in there fast. I've left these onions, I think they could go a little while longer. I've dug up all the beetroot, and here it is. This is all the beetroot I've gotten. So I never seem to have much success with the rainbow beetroot. The bow tree beetroot, on the other hand, seems to always be really good. So next year I'm going to stick to that. Also, another little gardening tip. When you plant your beetroot, remember to thin them out, or this happens. I've pulled up loads of beetroot that are just tiny like this. So remember to thin out your beetroot and any of your seeds. I mean, some of them are great, but a lot of these are really tiny, which is a tiny bit disappointing. I'll be remembering that for next year. Remember to thin out the beetroot, Deborah, for Christ's sake, so you get better quality beetroot. I've cut back the rogue potatoes that was in the yard. He's still there. I'm not dug them out. We'll just, we'll see how that goes. And I've thinned out the courgettes. I've harvested all the courgettes, I can. These are just a normal courgette, just everyday courgette. And these ones are Virginia 3s. They're slightly lighter coloured, sort of lime coloured courgette. They're really nice. They'll hopefully spread out now the beetroot isn't in here. So yeah, I might use this space for carrots. Seems a shame to waste the space. And the last bed, we've still got rogue 
potatoes there. These are rogue potatoes here, aren't they? That's Atlantic giant pumpkin at the back. And this is the crown prince down here. He is starting to flower or do something. He'd need to get a wiggle on though, because spooky season's just around the corner. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how these are looking. Do you know what? I think we do have a few parsnips. Okay, that's a parsnip, that one, that one, that one. Oh, that might be one there as well. And I think there's a few dotted in here. <laughs> that looks suspiciously like a carrot. The extra little onions I planted in here seems to be doing fine. And the carrots, well, they're carrots. They're growing like carrots should. I did plan to cut the grass today. That's not going to happen. A couple of weeks ago, I did put grass feed down that contained like weed killery type stuff. And I also edged the grass as well, just to tidy all these edges up. This is where the potatoes will be going. These are the potatoes I'd harvested last time in here. So I'll put the rest of the potatoes in here to keep them good. Here's how the garlic's looking. It's drying out pretty well. Still not quite there. And the onions. I'm not entirely sure these are going to be very good onions. They might be edible, we'll wait and see. But they are just taking their time drying out. Here's my haul from today. So here's my black currants. So I'm going to defrost the red currants that I have already. I'm going to use these to make jam with them. Cherries. I feel like I at least need to give one of these a try. So moment of truth. How do the cherries taste? Mm-hmm. They're good. Mm-hmm. We got a load more than we got last year. I mean, honestly, last year we got about six. There's a few that are kind of split like this. So I shan't be eating them. This one looks amazing. And then <laughs> you see the bottom, that's a bit grim. And here are my first courgettes. That thing is pretty substantial. So this is my harvest for today. Cherries, blackcurrants, courgettes, and some more daddies. Oh, and the beetroot, I forgot about the beetroot. The beetroot I will be pickling. I'm going to be making some jam soon. Looking forward to that. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Subscribing is of course optional, but it's very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye. We've got the red currants. Why is there so much big noise in the garden today? It's so frustrating. That does not sound like 30 miles an hour. Anyway.